There are so many of Osho's sannyasins who didn't become enlightened. Where do you think they went wrong? For someone to become enlightened, they need, they need to give their life to God, or truth, or beingness, whatever you want to call it. And I just don't think they are willing. When you give your life to God, or truth, or beingness, you don't have a future anymore, because you're gone. And I don't think they are willing. I think it's that simple. They wanted to have an after enlightenment, and there is no after enlightenment for you. Enlightenment is the end of you. It's termination, annihilation of you. And I don't think they are willing. They are happy to get high on Osho's energy. They are happy to collect knowledge and become spiritually knowledgeable but they weren't happy to give their life to truth, which is a death. And I think this is the main reason that most people don't wake up. You don't survive enlightenment. You who are looking for enlightenment do not survive enlightenment. It is a death. Anything else? Uh, along the same lines, there are a lot more people who are seekers than awakened people. Why aren't people waking up? <laughs> the previous answer was the, the same answer, you see. Um, when I first got interested in uh, higher consciousness, I got interested in it because I wanted to be successful in business. And I realised that if you have clarity and if you have higher consciousness, it's reasonably hard to, to lose. And so I started developing higher consciousness at a very young age, but for the wrong reasons. It wasn't until I came across Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh in 1983 and took sannyas that my whole direction changed from making, being successful in business to being successful in higher consciousness towards enlightenment and heart. And it's a totally different game. Being successful in business demands resistance, totality. Being successful in higher consciousness towards enlightenment demands surrender totality. It is a totally different game. But the recipe is the same, totality. You have to give your whole self to it. You can't be partial. It doesn't work. You can begin partial, but if you really want to wake up, you have to give your whole life to God, a whole life to truth. You can't be partial. There's nothing in it for you. There's no future in it for you. And so what drops in enlightenment is the I that thinks it has a future, thinks it has a past, thinks it is a somebody. That bit disappears. You as a personality, which is not who you are either, is still here and the body is still here. But you're existing now as beingness aware of beingness which is very, very different because you don't have any boundaries, you don't have any reference points. And the mind goes silent. Very different way to live. Freedom. The prison is the mind itself, the I. That is the prison. Because along with the eye dropping in enlightenment, so does all fear. You don't ever experience fear again. If you do, you're not awake. It's simple. How does one become willing to give 
their totality to truth. Hmm. Once you start witnessing the mind, you start to see all the little lies it tells itself. And you start to examine belief systems that you've been brainwashed with by your religion, your society, your parents, the government, whoever else got into your head. And you get to see that all these belief systems are actually prisons. And you start undoing them because you're interested in freedom. And all belief systems are prisons. And so I just started undoing everything until there was nothing left. It took a long time. It was a deliberate, conscious effort to be free. And during that journey, I got to see that there was actually no purpose in life, that there was no point. See, we're sold the idea that we have purpose and that there is meaning in life. In the nearly 70 years I've been alive, I have not found purpose or meaning that is not a belief system of some kind that has been given to me by someone else. In my own direct experience, I cannot find purpose or meaning in life. But what I could find was a way of living that is very beautiful. And that is the way of the heart. And so before giving my life to truth, I gave my life to heart. And it is the same deal, pretty much. Everything for heart and nothing for you. And when we give our life to heart and we remove all the obstacles that are in the way of us perceiving heart, we start to find that we love everybody and everything. And because we love everybody and everything, we just want to take care of everybody and everything. And so we move into service. So 10 years before awakening, I've moved into service of humanity, the plants, the, the animals, human beings. I fell in love with everything. When the Advaita Vedanta teachers came to town, and I experienced myself as beingness, my mind fell in love with beingness. And it was in that love affair with beingness that my mind gave itself to God. The love affair from my mind, without an eye, to beingness is there to this day. <laughs> 